Hey, Eric, congratulations. I know you were only 0-1 here, I guess, losing a couple of years ago, but you, you have to know Arkansas had won here since 95, lost 14 in a row. And how, how big was tonight uh, from that pers perspective? Yeah, I mean, we, talk, we talked about it after the game. We didn't really talk about it, you know, before the game, but, um, you know, none of us, you know, the players weren't here. It's a different team, and, and – um, you know, right now we're a really confident team on the road. I mean, I, I think that everybody can see that. We came, you know, we got on the plane with the with the thought process of, of, of winning this game and not being satisfied with how we've played. And, you know, when a team wins at, at this pace, you know, you, 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 you got a group that's not satisfied, a group that's, you know, that's hungry and wants to continue to get better. I didn't think we played that great in the first half, but certainly in the second half. And, and, you know, we did outscore by by three in the first half and by five in the second half, scored 82 points. You know, the most impressive thing is just six turnovers against a team that really turns people over and, and is aggressive defensively. So proud of the fact that we out-rebounded. Great job taking care of the basketball on the road as well. And then um, you guys outscored them. I think, you know, they're up by six and they're at home and, you know, they're a pretty good team. And you're thinking, well, Florida might pull it out again. <laughs> Um, and then you guys put a 28 to 14 run on him. And just what, what do you think keyed that? I thought D Devo Davis was, was absolutely phenomenal. I, you know, we wanted to get out and transition a little bit more. I thought we were a little bit too stagnant. Um, they went to a zone. We hit a three. We got the ball in the interior of the zone, another possession. And, and um, you know, we were alert um, for them to, 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 to play that zone. Um, and again, I, I mean, I thought our, I thought Devo off the bench was, you know, was, was, was really important for, for us in the second half. And obviously the foul trouble that Devo had, you know, in the first half, you know, I thought took us a little bit out of the rhythm because we, we needed him out there in the first half as well. And, you know, Devo apologized for getting the T, but, you know, it wasn't a one point game. I mean, what, what was your thought, thought on that? Are you, you okay with that? You know, I'm cool with it, man. We won. He's, <laughs> I mean, he got up high and, He's emotional. I'm emotional. It's all good, man. We'll we'll take the W and and move on. Okay, I'm, I might have a couple more, uh, but I'll turn it back. Good, good to see you smiling with your shoulder icing down. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Only one more game with this thing. Okay, well, that's good to know. Scotty. Yeah, Eric. I know you've had some really good college teams before, um, but is this the toughest one that you've coached, or at least the one that's least likely to back down with his back against the wall? Yeah, I mean, I, I, you know, I think that, that this is a group that really believes um, that they can win. They certainly have great defensive toughness. Um, yeah, it's as tough as any team I've been around. It's, as, it's you know, the belief. I think maybe more so than anything, Scotty, it's, it's the way that we've improved and kind of flipped the switch, much like last year, um, you know, where it looked like maybe, you know, we were discombobulated. Where was the season going to go? Uh, both years, if you don't have high character, it could, it could spin the wrong way when, when you've lost five out of six. And certainly last year with the way we lost it at LSU in Alabama. This is kind of a specific question, but that shot fake sidestep move that JD. Yeah, we work on it every day, JD and I. I go over to the side court and really want him shooting a sidestep three when the game's on the line. <laughs> it's like how I guess I know you probably obviously see him work on that shot a lot but like how big time of a move is that because he seems like he hits opponents with it once or twice maybe even more than that each game yeah in all seriousness he, JD does work on that um he really really does and you know I told an NBA buddy of mine today we were, we were talking about our team and and I said, the thing that makes him so dangerous uh, to guard is he shoots from anywhere he shoots he's got a you know he's he's like Steph Curry in the fact that those guys just shoot from wherever, whenever you think they're absurd shots and they go in and they stretch the defense out. And he really puts pressure on defensive teams. Cause I never know when he's going to shoot. So I don't know how the heck they'd ever know when he's going to shoot. Cause I have no idea half the time when he pulls, uh, but I do want the ball in his hands. And, and uh, tonight, we actually moved him off the ball because I thought Devo was so good taking the ball to the cup. And, and I thought Florida struggled to keep uh, Devante in front of him. And when, when Devo gets out and, and runs in transition, 
I mean, saw it the other day. He had an assist to Audis for a big layup, and then he had a couple layups on the run too. Like when he's doing that, I mean, where does that take you guys offensively? Changes us all together. I mean, he had 19 points, seven to 10 from the field. Again, another game where he hit two threes. He made his foul shots going three for four. Let us an assist with four. Most impressively, zero turnovers. I mean, he played, you know, 20, 28 minutes with zero turnovers to four assists. Um, plus 11 uh, while he was in the game. He was our second highest plus minus guy along with Jay Wills plus 15. So I, I thought he was outstanding tonight. Much. Yeah, coach, I'm curious what your thoughts were on, on that matchup between Jalen and Castleton tonight. Yeah, Castleton's a really tough matchup uh, for us and for everybody. I mean, he, he did go to the foul line 10 times. You know, we had to move Jay Will off of him for a little bit. Um, you know, Castleton most impressively drew 11 fouls, um, 29 points. You know, I was, I was happy with the fact that, that we kept him off the glass for the most part. He did have six boards in 35 minutes, but we didn't want him to get up in eight or nine uh, rebounds. And, and one of the things we talked about at halftime was if they throw the ball into Castleton, that does eliminate the three ball. And I thought that, you know, exchanging twos instead of threes would certainly help our, uh, help us defensively. And you look at in the second half, they went one and nine compared to in the first half when they made seven um, of 16. I thought that was a big turning point for us for sure. And how big was it that Jalen, I think he picked up his, his fourth foul with about eight minutes left and, and he played the rest of the game with, without picking up that fifth. What, what did you think about that? Yeah, I mean, I obviously I, I I trusted him much to 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 have him still in there. We 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 moved Stan over to Castleton and, and moved Jalen over to guard a perimeter player. Um, a DC guarded in one possession, so we were again willing to live with the ball going inside because um, we we thought we could you know once we got the lead we thought we were would still have the ability to, you know to score the ball, um, but we did we just felt like if they started hitting threes that you know, that might be too much to overcome. Curtis. Coach, Florida has been a good defensive team. And, you know, you guys came in tonight and better than two to one assisted turnovers. You had five and double figures, uh, shot it well. I, just what is your overall take on the offensive performance tonight? I thought we were, you know, not, not great in the first half, uh, but did shoot 47%, which, you know, for us is a, a really good percentage in the three ball. I thought we were really selective in the first half going four and nine, shooting 44%. Didn't get to the foul line enough, but but the six FTAs that we did get, we converted at an 84% rate. Uh, and then in the second half, you know, much like the fir first half, we, you know, we we did go 15 to 33, um, you know, and still shot the three decently with, with three and nine. But the biggest factor I thought you guys was was our ability. Uh, to draw free throws, you know, just just six in the first half and 14 in the second half, and then being able to make them at an 80, whatever, 7% rate, I thought, you know, was kind of the, the difference offensively for us. And you've mentioned a lot just how difficult it is to win on the road in this league. That's five SEC wins on the road now. Just, I mean, what do you think about the way this group has traveled and competed? You know, awesome. I mean, I, you know, again, I just, you know, we could have won that game in Bama, you know, we, I mean, we were right there. We get, you know, and, and that stings still, um, you know, but I, you know, I'm not a big hockey fan, but, but Daryl Sutter with the Cal Calgary flames, he said it best. They're playing really well. And he said, I don't care if we win 10 straight unless it's in the playoffs. And so for us, it's just, you know what, we got another game coming Saturday against Kentucky and how do we get ourselves ready to play another one game series um, you know, obviously we, you know, we got two home games, uh, and then the, and then the final game in, in Tennessee. So, uh, take one game at a time and, and, and keep following the game plan and, 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 and keep diving into our preparation. Like they have, they've done an incredible job. Christina. Were you surprised at all when Florida came out and made those seven threes in the first half? And how did you kind of lock that down in the second half? Yeah. Um, you think the Calgary Flame will send me a T-shirt since I gave a shout out to them? I, I, Christine, I, I thought that, you know, Appleby played so well in their last game. Um, 
and he made so many big shots. Uh, I would say him coming out, knocking two down right away is on me. Um, I made the decision to put a DC on him instead of our point guard. And, and I felt like maybe length because the DC had done such a good job guarding Tennessee's smaller guards. Um, but Appleby hit a baseline out, catch and shoot where we were a little bit late getting to him. Um, and then, and then because the DC is used to digging in the post, the first one that, that 22 Appleby hit was off a post dig because we did want to dig down on Castleton early in the game. And, uh, so that I, I think those those two in particular are on, are on me. Um, Fleming, we you know we wanted to respect his three, but but also respect his dribble drive. So that's kind of a scouting report three because he hit one of those early ones. Um, so I would say you know more so than the players, you know those threes in particular are on are on me and decisions that I made going into the game. Five five question please. And Eric, I think Mike had this in his notes. Uh, you guys, I guess, are now like 11 and on these short turnarounds Saturday, Tuesday, or maybe it's other days, but the, the, like two or three days prepare your, your, uh, and I think the six or seven Tuesdays in a row you've won. Just what, what, what do you make of that? Well, I think that when you play with the quick turnaround, you've got to be very clear, very concise with your game plan. Um, you've got to make sure that, the, you know, you don't overload your team. Um, I thought we, in the second half, we made it a little simpler than maybe what we did at the beginning of the game. Just something as simple as, Hey, no more threes, knock it off. If it goes into Castleton, we'll live with it. Play him a little bit more straight up. Don't help and, and dig and, and sag and spy on him. Stop it. And, and obviously, you know, I don't know if it was our defense or they missed some, but obviously one and nine was much, much different than, you know, than, than, than what we saw the first half, which was seven threes. I think the Flames might have been in Atlanta when you were coaching with the Hawks. Did you ever go to a Flames game? Yeah, they were they were the Thrashers. Thrashers, okay, okay. I can't. Atlanta remember. Thrashers, owned, owned by the same owners. Okay, I'm not a hockey guy either. Well, you should have gotten good tickets then. <laughs> I got great tickets. Not a, lot of, not a lot of NHL fans in Atlanta, I can tell you that, at least when I was there. Okay. Coach, appreciate See you guys. Hey, Mike, 